Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. We are gonna be talking skincare, but this video is requested. We're gonna be talking about if you are brand new to skincare, brand spanking new, maybe you have a teenager that is starting skincare for the first time, you don't know where to start her or him or her, <laughs> and I need to teach them the basics of skincare. And I'm talking like what not to mix together, what order to apply, things to avoid, that kind of stuff to kind of like prevent some irritation and get them started on a really healthy regimen that's gonna serve them for the rest of their lives. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for being here. friends let's go ahead and get started if you are not new here you probably know I don't talk a lot about anything except for mature skin and all the things that can really reverse the hands of time but I have a tween daughter she's only 11 but her and her friends are so into skincare and it's just funny to me because I just think all the time I knew then what I know now, man, would my face look different, <laughs> right? And so I think anyone who has mature skin can attest that back in the day, things weren't like they are now. You don't see as many TikToks or reels showing people skincare routine. We used to slather ourselves in baby oil and use tanning beds. And so thankfully, times have changed. I think the importance of sunscreen is apparent um, to the point where it wasn't back in the 80s, you know? So, we can all agree, number one thing when it comes to skincare for teenagers, or even if you're just brand new to a skincare regimen in general, prevention is easier than treatment. And if you've ever had hyperpigmentation, you know exactly what I mean, because they're almost impossible to get rid of once you have them, and it's years years and years and years of sun damage that popped to the surface 10, 20, 30 years later. It's fun, right? So I wanna talk about the very basics. I'm gonna show you guys a few things, things to think about when it comes to teen or beginning a skincare regimen. And then I'm gonna take you back and I'm gonna do a skincare regimen with my daughter. Because she, she wanted to get into skincare, I did some research and I'm going to show you kind of like my favorite brand that I found for her and then she's going to tell you what she actually loves and what her favorites are and so I'm going to teach you a little bit about what to look for when it comes to ingredients and what's actually needed in a regimen and the things that they absolutely do not need that someone like my skin needs which is all of those active ingredients. Okay, first things first. I'd say make your child or yourself test and see what kind of skin type you have. It floors me how many people don't realize what their skin type is. Now I do wanna caveat that by saying your skin type can change from season to season, most definitely through the years. So I grew up with combination skin. I was always pretty oily in the T-zone, pretty normal on my cheeks sometimes dry in the winter, um, until I started actually taking care of my skin and it completely normalized. So just because you're born or you think you're born <laughs> with a certain skin type, that doesn't mean it's not gonna change and it definitely changes with hormone fluctuations. So teenage years are the first time where hormones play a part and then again, when you go through premenopausal or menopause. So. I will be dealing with that next. But for now, my daughter is starting to get to the point where hormones are starting and that can wreak a lot of havoc on skin, especially for teenagers and their confidence. So getting them started on a skincare regimen before that happens will kind of set them up for success to actually be able to prevent a lot of those things from happening and also 
know how to deal with it, get those things to heal as fast as possible as well. So how do you determine your skin type? You wanna wash your face with a gentle cleanser. That means nothing, in my opinion, nothing sudsing. Um, gentle is almost like cream or milk-based cleansers. Um, our Saint cleanser is considered a gentle cleanser. This is one of my favorites from La Roche-Posay. The Tolerain line is awesome. Really non-stripping, because you don't want to strip your skin. It's going to affect the way your skin's going to feel afterwards. So you want to wash with a gentle cleanser, pat dry, and you want to wait one hour. And you don't want to put anything on your skin, no skincare whatsoever. And then you want to assess after an hour how your skin feels. So if you are shiny anywhere, those points of your face are oily. If you are tight anywhere on your face, you have dry skin there. Sometimes you'll actually see flaking already at that point. And if you have a little bit of both, you're gonna be a combo. So sometimes people will be kind of shiny in the middle, kind of tight on the sides. That means you are a combo skin. And if you have neither of that, your skin is normal. You are very lucky and probably a minority. I feel like teenagers definitely need to kind of assess their skin type and that will help you kind of determine what kind of ingredients you're looking for in those products that you're picking out. It really can help. Just for your teenager, for yourself as well. You feel so empowered when you can actually look at the back of an ingredient list and be like, all right, this has glycerin. Glycerin is a humectant. I know Sarah said that, that is good for dehydrated skin. This is a good one, right? So it's not gonna be stripping or drying. That's a win, right? So we'll go over ingredients to look for as I kind of go through my daughter's ever-growing collection. Once you determine your skin type, I would say it's just keeping it simple, okay? What is that acronym? KISS, keep it simple, stupid. When you've never ever had a regimen before, I would say you just want to get in the routine of daily washing your face and moisturizing. And it's as simple as that. And I noticed six years ago when I started skincare for the first time, that was all I did. I washed my face and I used our cream and my skin type changed. My skin dramatically changed and even the simplest of routines can make a huge difference. A gentle cleanser. I always stress gentle because I feel like one of the biggest issues I see with teenage skin is that they might be acne prone, like most are once they start getting acne for the first time, they wanna go in with something that's just gonna like, kill all those blemishes, dry them up, get them off of your face, right? And what I see the most of all is that they actually are damaging their barrier more so than actually getting rid of the blemishes. Blemishes actually a lot of time cause dehydration in the skin. And so you have to keep that clean in a gentle way or it's gonna cause scarring. And I don't wanna like scare anyone, but like blemishes in this age are what can cause those hyperpigmentation, that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, PIH. Those dark points after your blemishes heal that take a really long time to get a, get rid of. And those are the things that then you have to start some of those active ingredients that you might not need as long as you keep it under control. So no matter what, I'd say start with a gentle cleanser. You can always up it from there if it's not doing its job, but if you start too harshly on your skin that's like virgin baby skin, it's never been washed daily like this, I would say you're gonna, you might do more harm than good. So I always say gentle, and we're focusing on really keeping your barrier as strong as possible, because that's what's gonna keep out all the nasty bacteria and pollution and things that can actually cause those breakouts. Hormones we can't really do a whole lot about, but we can still keep your skin clean. After a cleanser, good moisturizer. And I say a moisturizer for your skin type, and that's when being able to read the back of the labels um, can come in handy, whether you are more oily or more dry, kind of looking for what is a humectant, an emollient, or an inclusive. So those are the three main types of, I'd say, moisturizing, barrier nourishing ingredients that are gonna be in every single moisturizer on the market. And so if you can recognize which ones 
are in that product, it's going to tell you what type of skin it's going to be good for um, without having to try it and do a lot of trial and error. You'd be able to look at the packaging. Mac Dense, you've heard a million times. Those are our glycerins, our hyaluronic acid, things that bind water and hold it into the skin. You will find those in almost everything. In fact, I feel like hyaluronic acid is literally in everything. I'm like, is it in the water I'm drinking? It's put in everything lately with skincare. So these humectants are best for those with oily skin. Usually oily skin is actually dehydrated. A lot of times that is what's producing your oily skin. Your skin is overcompensating for being dried out. So humectants will be your best friend. Of course, the two moisturizers I grabbed, for examples, neither of them have ingredients on the actual packaging. That's okay. Emollients are things like ceramides. Ceramides is a big keyword right now. Like CeraVe is literally named after having ceramides in its ingredients list. Ceramides are amazing. They give your skin that kind of, kind of lube up your skin. It's literally their purpose. So if, but if you're dry skin, you want lots of it. Ceramides, squalene, squalene, those type of ingredients. And then there's occlusives, my personal favorite, um, because our makeup is straight up and occlusive. It's amazing. It's what seals in all that moisture, holds it in overnight. Those oily skin girls are really good to have occlusives because again, they get dehydrated, meaning they're gonna lose a lot of that overnight water loss through the skin. So those are things like mineral oil, petrolate, and think of good old Vaseline, something that locks it in, it's a little bit heavier and kind of seals it over the skin. That's an occlusive. So a lot of like night creams that are richer and thicker in consistency will be comprised of more of those occlusive ingredients. I have normal skin and I literally love them all. I sometimes layer them. I feel like keeping my barrier really like nourished and plump is just my go-to. And so hydrated skin will always good thing. Like there's no way to over hydrate your skin because even oily skin is usually dehydrated. So if you follow um, K-Beauty or Korean kind of skincare, their entire philosophy is in like overly hydrating the skin. They don't use a lot of actives. I feel like those lines are actually really good for teenage skin because they don't have a lot of harsh ingredients. It just focuses on hydration. And so when you see those like toners and essences and serums and creams within Korean beauty, a lot of times it's all just jam packed with these ingredients, humectants and malleants, occlusives, and it really just hydrates your skin. And so it gives that really beautiful plump look and the whole like glass skin goals, that's all Korean beauty does. So it's really good for hydrating the skin, whether they are trying to kind of balance the skin if you're oily or if you are prone to acne and blemishes, which tend to need more hydration, it will kind of help balance that as well. So if you wanna keep it super simple, your nighttime is gonna be simply cleanser, moisturizer. That's it. Daytime, same thing. Cleanser, moisturizer, and do you know what I'm gonna say? Ooh. <laughs> I am trying to teach my daughter at a very young age. Um, Cause she just turned 11, so she started at age 10. Um, sunscreen every day. I obviously have been freckled my entire life. So is she, and we're just gonna be more prone to getting more freckles, dark spots, and hyperpigmentation. I've already had skin cancer. The last thing I want is my daughter to get melanoma. So I'm teaching her now that you can never apply too much SPF. And it's the number one thing that will age you. And even though she's not concerned with aging right now, um, it's funny because we're so opposites. Like I self tan every three days and she's like, I don't like the look of tan. I like my skin nice and white. And so I'm like, more power to you, whatever you love. And so she actually wants to wear the SPF so she doesn't get tan. So I'm like, go for it. That's awesome because she's starting with a really good habit now while she's young that hopefully she will stick to. High school 
in college when skincare was the last thing I was thinking about. So it's all about habits. So SPF every day. And luckily there are so many good ones on the market. I will show you the line that I found for my daughter that I love everything. Um, but I will just preface this by saying, I feel like the days of having to use all one line for teenagers, like anybody ever try that proactive line? <laughs> I remember my mom bought it for my brother because he was acne prone and I tried it and it literally wrecked my skin. I was not acne prone. Um, and I dried out so bad, flaking, peeling, redness. And I think ever since then, I've always been like, I'm not going to just stick with all one line. I like a lot of lines, obviously, but um, there's no need to just pick like a certain acne regimen or something from a system and only use that. There are a ton of great products within different lines. A lot of stuff you can get at the drugstore nowadays. Um, I mean, anything, there's so many good products out there. So finding an SPF is even better nowadays. I remember when they're all white cast, all mineral based, all reeked of sunscreen, heavy, thick, didn't like them, right? Now, the filters on the market are amazing. If you wanna go even better, get with some Korean brands because um, they go on like butter. Like, like the thinnest, most beautiful <laughs> moisturizer. Where were these when I was growing up? I probably could have prevented all of this, but alas, hopefully my daughter will. So, a lot of great SPFs on the market. I'm gonna show you. I definitely recommend this one. It has silicones if you're a Saint user, sorry. I love this for days I know I'm not wearing makeup. It's one of the best sunscreens I've ever used. And it is that Centella that I've shown you guys before um, by Skin1004, I think that's how you say the brand name. It's awesome, so awesome. My daughter is becoming like an SPF junkie and she wants them all kind of like I do, and then she tests them as well as I get them. So um, she switches up during the day. I'll have her show you her favorites, but I'd say is just find one that they don't mind applying. That is the key with SPF. Act like it's just another step of your regimen. Like get something that's not gonna break you out, and a lot of the filters on today's market don't. Um, if you are sensitive to chemical filters like in this, then you would have to stick with more of that mineral base. But again, the technology has changed so much that like you can find something. Um, if you need help finding an SPF, I'm always testing them. And there's a lot of amazing ones that have silicone in them, obviously that um, I can't wear under makeup, but my daughter wears them and loves them. So key is find one you don't mind applying, act like it's a moisturizer, use it as the last step, that's what creates that film, and that's what gives you that protection, okay? Focus on cleaning the skin twice a day, moisturizing, SPF in the morning, and then I'm gonna show you some ways you can step it up a notch, and this is specifically for teenager skin. These are gonna be serums, my favorite product. And there's so many on the market, you guys. It, it, it's it's very confusing in today's world. There's just so many products to look Once at. Once you branch into the world of serums, then you gotta be talking about order of application. And so this is something I taught my daughter. It's always a matter of thinnest to thickest. And so that can be easy when you're talking about if you're incorporating a toner, which is obviously liquidy. Um, but when you get into serums, and let's say they all have a serum-like consistency, I have my daughter do the drop test. So I'm gonna put a drop. Of each one. On my hand. And I'm not saying teenagers need three serums. My daughter on the other hand will show you and think she does. But I'm just gonna put a drop and then I'm going to see which one runs the fastest. And that's gonna show me more about the thickness, the viscosity of these serums. 
So it's going to be this one, then this one, and then the middle one last based on how they ran down my hand. And so what that does is it just means you're going to have better penetration of the first serum as opposed to if you put on something thicker and then you try to put on something thinner, it can't penetrate that thicker material. So that's why we obviously put anything that's a cream formulation on last. It's going to lock it in. Um, if you were to put on a cream and then put on a serum over it, this serum, you're wasting your money because you're never going to get this to do its job through a product like this. And so that's kind of the, some of the things that teenagers or people that have never done skincare before might not know when they're starting a regimen. So order of application, thinnest to thickest. If you can't tell from looking in a bottle, do the drip test. Now, another thing to note is always what not to mix. And I feel like this is really easy with teenagers as long as they're not using any actives. And I'll be honest, there's not a whole lot of actives that teenagers need. So the three main actives I'd say for most people's skincare regimen, obviously retinoids are number one. Retinoids are amazing. They've been proven to do more than any other skincare ingredient on earth thus far, but retinoids aren't necessarily needed until you're, I'd say in your mid to late twenties. And it's more of like a preventative building collagen, uh, preventing fine lines, that kind of stuff. Now, the one exception to that is very acne prone skin. Somebody that's dealing with really acneic skin yeah. hormones, I would say after we try one ingredient, I would say the second one would be, and I'll get to that in a minute, Second one would be a retinoid adapalene, which is trademark Differin. So Differin is luckily now available over the counter. So now you can go to Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, wherever, and you can get it. And it is a pretty strong form of a retinoid, but it has been clinically proven specifically for acne. So it's never my first choice for aging skin. It doesn't show as to do as much for um, say fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, that kind of stuff. But for acne control, it's incredible. It used to be by prescription only, but now it's not. So that would be, I would say, the only retinoid that someone would need to use in this stage. Um, otherwise, they can start using a retinol, retinal, and then no one needs tretinoin <laughs> until they're at least, I'd say, in their 30s or 40s. I'd say 30s. I personally wouldn't recommend my 20-year-old starting tret. It seems a bit overkill, but then, then again, a lot of people are using it in their 20s now, again, to prevent. Um, and that, like I said, it does everything from building collagen, fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, acne, it is all encompassing to be honest. So it can be really beneficial, but you guys know probably by now, there's a lot of side effects. And so I don't know many 20 year olds that wanna really be dealing with redness, peeling, irritated, dry, flaky skin um, at that point in their lives. And so I'd say start with something really um, non-irritating like a retinal, retinaldehyde in your 20s, if you are watching this and you just have no skin regimen whatsoever, but you are not a teenager, I would still recommend starting with a retinal, not tretinoin, which is the prescription only form of retinoic acid. So I have other videos that kind of explain now has been shown to do the same thing that tretinoin will just not as quickly. And so that's why your irritation is lower as well. I've been using right now for years. I don't get any irritation with it. When I tried Tret, I did. And I don't think my skin works well with it because of my rosacea and things like that. It's just a little too harsh for me. So depends on your preferences. But if you need a recommendation, just reach out. So the other actives, if you will. So we got retinoids. I'd say the next one would be acids. So here we're talking about AHAs, BHAs. 
alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids. AHAs are those that are breaking the bonds between your skin cells. And so what it does is it helps exfoliate your skin by letting that skin cell turnover happen quicker. So usually you hear about glycolic and lactic, sometimes some of the other weaker ones um, like PHAs that are a lot more gentle. I would say no teenager needs to be using a glycolic. A glycolic is pretty strong. Um, it's best for more mature skin. Lactic can be pretty gentle and PHAs can be as well. Now, I don't necessarily think that you need them when you're 11, 12, 13. <laughs> At that age, your skin is turning over very quickly on its own. It's when you get older that it just starts slowing down significantly and needs a little bit more help. So I'm not saying you don't need any exfoliation, but um, PHAs, which are the weakest because they're larger molecules and don't penetrate as deep, those I would say is as much as they need. If they are using something like that and they're on something like Differin for acne, those are the things that they can never combine without irritation potential. So the actives you want to avoid using at the same time. And so that's what we wanna teach, no mixing. Now, BHAs are in a different class and I feel like they are very good for those acne prone skin. So BHAs are the acids that can actually go down in your pore and clean out your pores. Um, because they are oil soluble. They can dissolve that oil and they can get in. Um, whereas AHAs cannot. AHAs are more like helping you shed that top layer faster. BHAs are gonna actually get that decongest, decongest those pores, if you will. So if you're thinking about acne, obviously you'd say, okay, that one would seems beneficial for teenage skin. Now the thing is that is salicylic acid. Salicylic is a very drying acid, which is a, another reason why a lot of people with acne overuse those type of ingredients and then get super dry because they're not rehydrating that barrier. So do I think it's a good option? Yes, as long as you are using it in very small quantities and not thinking that you need an item in your regimen to be or have salicylic acid. So I would say pick one and use it not necessarily every single day. You're gonna have to test it on your skin and see if it's gonna dry your skin. So I'll show you. My daughter stole one of my favorites and it is a blend of PHA and salicylic acid that I personally used when I was breaking out. Um, something like the cult favorite Paula's Choice, that's a 2% salicylic acid, might be too strong for a teenager's skin. Um, again, it kind of depends. Obviously, skincare is extremely personal and everyone's skin is different. So you kind of have to try it, see how it works. But if it's drying you out, you gotta really, you know, squeak the brakes, go back and use it less or use it not necessarily on your full face. So my daughter was breaking out the other day. I actually did give her that one and told her to use it only on those areas where she was breaking out and it cleared it up in one, one night. And I told her not to use it everywhere because she does have dry patches. So knowing how to kind of like adjust is also key when it comes to making sure we don't damage that barrier while we're trying to get rid of that acne. Okay, so then I'm gonna say, I think I said there's three, but technically I'd say there's four, although one of them doesn't count because you can mix it with anything. So let's go back to three. The last one, ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Um, you hear me talk about it all the time. It is amazing because what does it do? It helps your SPF work better because it deals with free radicals. It helps protect your skin during the day. So I would say if I had to choose any actives for my teenage daughter, I would say a vitamin C serum in the, during the day. Um, it helps keep your, clear, your skin brighter and clearer with less dark spots. It's gonna help that SPF work better. And there's something about the glow that a vitamin C gives. It can be second to none. Now true ascorbic acid, which is pure L-ascorbic acid is 
the pure form of vitamin C is very unstable. I've told you guys this before. It degrades really fast with air and water in solution. It turns dark. Like it turns, I should show you guys an example. So if you have more mature skin, I would say go with the strong stuff. Teenagers, this right here, oh gosh, that's so old. Keep it as a demo. <laughs> Um, when it starts turning yellow, orange, dark, when it starts looking like whiskey, it's bad. Um, when it's yellow, it will still work, but it won't be the same percentage that it shows on the bottle. There's no need for a teenager to use a 15 or 20% pure ascorbic acid. It can really sensitize your skin. Um, by now I can, but when I started, there's no way. So I would say look for those derivatives. Anytime you see the word score bowl in the ingredient list, that is a derivative of vitamin C, which means it has to penetrate your skin. It gets converted to ascorbic acid once it's in your skin, which means much less irritation potential. So um, starting with the derivative, there's a lot of products on the market that have derivatives like that. Gentler and it'll give them in that good habit. And then obviously when they get later in life, they'll be able to easily work their way up to the stronger stuff and they're not going to have that irritation. And then the other thing, which I didn't count this as an active because like vitamin C, you don't want to mix with acids. You don't want to mix with retinoids. But the other thing is vitamin B3, which is niacinamide. Niacinamide is another one, kind of like hyaluronic acid. I'm pretty sure it's in everything. Oh, niacinamide, yes. Now, the cool thing is niacinamide really strengthens your barrier. It's amazing for acne prone skin. It helps clear your, keep your pores clear. It is one of the top ingredients. And so it's awesome and it's great that it's in everything. Um, I would say that's one of the things you really need to check your labels because you don't necessarily need a separate hyaluronic serum and a separate niacinamide serum. If it's in all the other products you're using, you won't need them separately. But I would say if you check your labels and it's not in anything, a niacinamide would be a really good serum to incorporate um, for teenage skin because it's going to help strengthen that barrier. It's going to help acne prevention as well. Ordinary has really good ones. I'm pretty sure that's the kind my daughter has, even though I looked at her labels and I told her she didn't need it because it's in everything and it's in everything she has. But, um, it's one of those things that's hard to kind of like use too much unless you're using something with a super high percentage. So you're most likely. Okay, so there we go. Gentle cleanser. I feel like at this age, there's no need to do toners, essences, mists. They can sometimes moisturize the skin. Um, toners are good steps if you are wanting to incorporate a gentler product like a salicylic acid toner. Um, sometimes those are but good. To keep it simple, not necessary. Serums. I love a good serum. I feel like that's the fun part of skincare is kind of using different serums every day. Again, if you're into simple, I'd say keep a vitamin C serum in the morning. Even better if it's got niacinamide and hyaluronic acid in it, it's gonna hit all of those things. Good moisturizer for your skin type. And then of course your SPF during the day um, in my daughter's routine. So let's get into it. Hi friends, we're back. I need my energy boost. This is my daughter, Kinley. Give me some. Mm -mm. That's caffeine. All right, we are in her bathroom. I turned the light off. Oh, wrong Why? Light. I don't know, that, that light's better. Hopefully you guys can see, okay? We're gonna show you, if you, if only I could turn around the camera to see her collection. So let's. I need more though. Yeah. Okay. So obviously she's my daughter. You know how I talked about keeping it simple. I started real simple. What are the first two products I got you? Three from Biola. I got you. Okay. So I started her with this cleanser. Find the other. Serum. Wait. 
moisturizer. I'm pretty sure I just started you with a moisturizer. Yeah, you sure you okay, so maybe I started really. I had already said, you know, you don't need everything from the same line. I went against my normal principles, and when I researched and found this line, I was like, this is perfect for kids, not kids, tweens, starting with skincare. So Bioma, I believe is how you say it. This is the jelly cleanser. This is the Bioma line. So you can find it at Target. Who else has it? I So um, Ulta has it and then- Ulta does have it. Sephora might have it. I have never seen it at Sephora unless it's they're never... carrying it now. But what's cool about it, I'm obsessed with their packaging. First of all, it's super cute. And I thought she would like having all this stuff in her cute new bathroom. But that not being, it, it actually is great about the science. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. The ingredients are listed on everything and the purpose for it is also set. And so it's steps. like, and then yes, and then the steps. So boost your barrier. Their entire line is about keeping your barrier strong. And you guys know, I just talked about that. I think that should be the number one purpose for tween skin, right? Um, and good habits and routine. So it will tell you what step this one is. So this is a cleanser. Um, sorry if this is backwards for you guys. Like the step two, three, four, and five, and that's all it has. So cleanse, tone, treat, moisturize, protect. Um, obviously you don't have to do all those steps. So I started Kinley with a cleanser and a serum. So she had these dry patches. So we went with hydrating serum. And what did I tell you guys what you need to look for? Number two ingredient, glycerin, humectant. It tells you on there it's a humectant. So you don't even have to remember that glycerin's a humectant. Um, squalane, I talked about that one too. Um, so it just kind of like tells you exactly what's in it and why, which I'm obsessed with, especially when you don't know what all the ingredients happen to be. Um, it says it on the front too. Squalene, glycerin. So, Oh, this one is step three, treat. So I started her with just a simple cleanser, one serum, and a moisturizer. And then we got into, where's your sunscreen? Then, then they came out with this one, which they didn't originally have, which is awesome, because it's a moisturizing gel like, sunscreen. That well, that one I don't feel like is necessary to start, but of course, you know, children, once they get a few, they want the whole line. You don't have the whole line, but she has quite a bit. So this one actually has an SPF 30, great ingredients, hyaluronic, beta-glucan. This one's great to teach them to apply it every day. I love having a separate one for mornings versus nighttime, which is a thicker, more moisturizing cream. So she was using this one. She just ran out, so we got her a new one. This one's supposed they to They have be different ones depending on your skin type. So this is a gel cream um, instead of the original, which was rich a cream. rich cream. So what's cool though is like, even though I found this line, cause I was like, there's not a lot of harsh actives. That doesn't mean there's not actives in it. Like, so if you are more mature and you're still looking for a line, it still has great, this has Bacatruol, which is a retinol alternative, no irritation, can have some of the same benefits. So there's a lot of good ingredients in these. I started her with the clarifying serum when she did have breakouts. Um, and it's because, oh, it's got blue tansy, which is an oil that's shown to um, prevent breakouts. Um, PHA, which I said was that very gentle exfoliator, zinc. But I looked at the ingredients and then like one of the first things, niacinamide. So again, niacinamide is in probably every single one of these things. Yep. And it's also- It's, like, in, it's in pretty much all of it. But also their cleansers are really, I'd say since they're focused on that barrier, they're focused on like being ceramide rich, meaning they're all pretty gentle. You don't think this is harsh and yes, or I, anything, I right? Yes, I really like that. Because I have another cleanser that's like really like thick and stuff, but that one's literally like jelly what? formulated and it transforms into a creamy lather. This is my favorite cleanser. So I started her with one cleanser because she obviously doesn't wear makeup. 
if you have a teen that's in the makeup stage, um, they do actually have a cleansing balm now, which I tell her when she's like, when we've been maybe outside wearing a lot of sunscreen, sunscreens can be difficult to take off and fully remove with one cleanser. And so another great brand, um, definitely I see focused a little bit older, not necessarily on teen skin, but Naturium, uh, this is their cleansing balm. Balms or oils will really kind of break up that makeup or SPF, depending on what you're using. She also has the same one that I showed you downstairs. I really like I'm that. telling you, this one is so good. Anything from this La roche Posay Tolerine line. These are my top two cleansers. Those are her favorites. Now, I was showing you guys or talking about salicylic acid downstairs. And so this is a really good one so that you don't overdo it with salicylic, but you can clear out your pores. So I tell her if she's having a breakout, either use this to kind of really make sure you're getting the skin clean or where's your toner? It's in oh, the fridge. There's like, yes, she has a fridge, skincare fridge over here. There's some just support, but. This is the toner she just stole from me. So uh, this <laughs> glow recipe, I only used it when I was breaking out. I love it because it's PHA and BHA, which is salicylic acid. And do you, you don't think it's drying, do you? No. It's got a lot of, see, I hate it when labels have, it's like a pet peeve of mine when the, it doesn't tell you anything on the label. That's why I love these. Look at that, every single ingredient and what it's for. Like genius, why doesn't everyone do this? Anyway, I'm, I really love this brand. I've tried it as well. Um, they are coming out with more and more stuff. So I feel like they're starting to get to the point where they have stuff for every age. Um, I just like the fact that none of their actives are too harsh and they're really balanced in their formulation. So, so the that between these two. What about them? This one's a brightening and this one's a pore type. So this one is a brightening toner. This one it has lactic acid, which like I told you guys is a gentle AHA. And then this one would be more for acne prone skin since it's PHA and it's got the BHA, which is the pore cleaning. Again, all of their formulations are really balanced for, for your skin's barrier. So everything's got glycerin. Urea is really good for it. Um, it's, I love their formulations. It's got mandelic in it. It's got some other gentle acids, but um, it's a brightening toner, so it's meant to, lactic acid is meant to exfoliate, get rid of dark spots. Cleanser. Remember, we're going to start with something gentle. So which one are you going to use? Let's go ahead. I'm not, I'm actually, I'm kind of breaking out slightly at the moment, but they're healing. So I feel like I, I use need. I once a week and I've already used that. I use those on Sundays usually. Yeah, so this one, salicylic acid. It does have glycerin as well. This is a really like cult favorite formulation um, though for a salicylic acid I'm product. Gonna use the I wouldn't use this with this at the same time. If this is gonna be gentler because you're gonna be able to rinse it off, this is gonna be a little bit more staying power. Again, if you're starting to get acne, incorporating something like this in your routine is gonna help. Um, and try that before you get to the whole different part. Um, you might not necessarily need it. Okay, what are we gonna try? I'm gonna use this one, but. Can I use it too? Okay. I use that, that La roche Posay one all the time. Dad has the same one. Same and, one. and I bought the same one for dad. Yes, it's really good. La roche Posay also has a Effaclair line that is made for acne prone skin. So that's another good line to check out to grab something with that in it as well. Okay, we're gonna wash real quick. Yeah. All right, so we're getting our microfiber cloths ready. Um, I'm just a huge fan of using cloths because they exfoliate at the same time. Yes. And make sure you're not gonna leave any residual on the face, like the whole splashing the face thing. It's always just messy and I never yeah. feel like it gets off all the cleanser really well. So, First things first, what do you do? Wait, before that, are your hands clean? Oh, no. So, one of the things I feel like <laughs> might be common sense, Can I use hand sanitizer? but isn't, especially with teenagers, especially if you're talking like teenage boys. I forget it sometimes. So. Washing your hands and always touching your face with clean hands before you cleanse 
or have you guys seen these? They're like viral on social media. And I have to admit, it is really nice to just be able to like, boop, boop, boop. This is the lavender. Oh gosh, that's strong. But the Power Mist by Touchland, she has it's one what too. all the people show on. She has one too, and it's vanilla, but I, I, like have, it. I have two because I feel like I run out quickly. She's the one that got me started on it. But wash your hands first or sanitize your hands before you put anything on your face, right? Okay, and then it's, usually it will tell you on the package and it to apply to wet one or to two pumps. dry skin. Teaching your teenagers to actually read instructions Damp for skin. once is also a good thing. Damp skin. Damp skin. So, water is by far the cheapest, but Kinley also uses don't you have one of my La Roche Posse sprays? Oh yeah, that also dampens your skin. Mm -hmm. That's fancier. I'd wait for to, uh, serums to use that. You can also dampen it with something like that. It's just water, mineral thermal basically. spring water. It is just water. So what this has got box? a cool jelly like consistency. This is a foamy conditioner. So. so it'll foam up once it hits water. What else have I taught you about cleaning your face? Always go down the neck, especially if you're wearing sunscreen. I like to rub it in until it almost dries down. Then I usually get my fingers wet and rub it in some more. I avoid my eyes because I have lashes, but if not, you can. Are these gentle enough to use around your eyes? Uh, I think so. I usually don't because I feel like I'm gonna get it in my eyes. Because some of the stuff she doesn't wear mascara. Well, give it in my eyes. she wears clear mascara. I have regular mascara, but I usually just do it for fun because I don't think I'm old enough. <laughs> I don't want to wear makeup. Okay, so not that much. then we use the cloth. Least, not that much. Oh gosh, this is like an OG mascara cloth. I know. Back it's in the day, it's no longer white. <laughs> you really, oh. this one's not that damp. I like to put it in like one spot. And don't use water too hot. How about that? Warm water, kind of. I like to use one side of the cloth. And then if I'm double cleansing, I will flip over and use the other side for the second cleanse. If I'm not double cleansing, I'll just flip it over and wipe off one more time. Sometimes you can actually break out by not getting your cleanser completely off. And especially around your hairline. Am I breaking out there my hairline? Because I feel like I used to, but I don't anymore. That means you're being better with your cleanser. I got a little self tanner because on mine. I feel like I like. Oh, one thing I had oh, to yeah, remind I to... Kenley about is after oh, you use it. Away. Oh, good. After you use your microfiber cloth one time, wash it. Do not just let it dry and use it again. I use it's, the dirty. Sometimes. <laughs> it's dirty. It's dirty. Okay. So we're going to act like we're doing. You have a, you, so Bioma doesn't have a vitamin C serum technically. Where's your third serum? I know, but I'm not a big fan of that one. Brightening serum? Yeah. So they have, is this the only serums they have? Yeah. Hydrating, brightening. They also have an oil, but they don't have clarifying. any Clarifying. Well, that's not a serum. So clarifying, obviously, when you're breaking out. I love how simple this makes it. Hydrating is obviously hyaluronic acid. Let's see what else it has. Glycerin, squalane, it's just skin conditioners mostly. Um, but this brightening serum actually does have ascorbic acid in it. Now, it doesn't say a percentage, and I'm guessing it's pretty low because it's like halfway down on the list, but it's got a little bit of lactic even in it. Um, but again, it's mainly niacinamide and those um, humectants like glycerin, squalane. So, but this one does have a little bit in it. So I feel like it's still introducing them to that brightening effects of a vitamin C. It's not so much that it's gonna react with anything, you know, cause it's, it's formulated with lactic. So technically you got 
vitamin C and an AHA in there. Does that make sense? When things are formulated together, then you know that it's okay to use together. It's when you're just mixing different products from different lines that sometimes you can get a little bit different. Now, if you don't have something that has it in it, I was telling you before, something like niacinamide serum separately, always good. And don't you have the ordinary one too? Um, I, oh, I just turned it all the way. I have these two. Yeah, so she also has giant jumbo niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, which I told her she doesn't need because it's in all of these, but- I do not care. She, because she likes to it, load it up. Again, I don't think you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna overdose or anything. Well, it can't really affect you too much. But these are your favorite, right? What We've serum? gone through, I've bought her multiple of these. What serum is this for? Mm, she sh I gave her the rest of my Centella. Uh, this is only if you have irritation, dryness, redness, it will calm your skin. Okay. Second rule, after your skin is clean, I never use a towel and dry my face. Now, I've been talking so long that now, of course, my face is dry. So either wet your fingers under the water again or use one of these fancy spray bottles or a toner even, or a facial mist. Not necessary, you can just use water. But your face, I'm running out your of face needs to be damp before you put any serum so that it gets full penetration. The drier your skin, the less your skin will absorb products. I, I wasn't gonna do toner, I was trying to keep it simple. You can put it on if you want. I need toner right now. I have remember I told you guys I was trying to start her simple and she's I want more, I want more. She's like me. We have a million different products and we like to change it on the daily. But as long as I'm teaching her how to use them correctly. So I'm gonna try your hydrating serum. Are now, we only cool, using one? You can use whatever you want, girlfriend. Okay. Drop I'm gonna it, use couple my drops. Serum. I feel like Kinley also uses a lot. Okay, good. Because we've been through That's a lot. All I use. Okay, we've been through a lot of bottles of these. How many of these have I bought? For clarifying, I don't use too much because it's kind of like runny. I think. Okay, yeah, so I taught her about depending on which one's thicker, so we put it thinnest to thickest. Usually, um, hydrating serums, I feel like, should be like, this I usually like put on, is it? Yeah. I usually put hydrating stuff on, well, here's the rule of thumb. If you can't tell and you do the drip test and you still are like, okay, they're very similar. I feel like it's supposed to be Whatever like you want to be the most effective, depending on your skin that day, Put it on first because whatever gets put on first is going to absorb deeper into the skin and do the most I usually good. I use this one first and then this one and this one, but it's supposed to be like this because I know this one's more runny. And I did the drip touch wrong. I went like. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Are you using this so one? Anyway, rule of thumb, always put apply serums on damp skin. The only thing you ever want to put on dry skin is retinoids, but we're not there yet. I don't, what is a retinoid? She told retinoid me what it is. Retinoid. I just told right. her, you don't need it yet. Can I use this? Go for it. Oh, this is a nice and my serum by Naturium. Naturium. Naturium good stuff as well. They have some good encapsulated vitamin C's too, but again, I think there's this moment. Don't you have one? The vitamin C, yeah. Yeah. I don't use it that Again, much, hyaluronic but... vitamin C. They're gold stabilized, so they don't get orange like Instead I showed you Instead of that, before. I usually use this. That's my favorite um, thing from that brand because I don't really like that brand. Vitamin C but... and niacinamide. So the bubble brand is also really popular with teenagers. I'm What I've tried, I'm not as impressed with. I like this one though. You like that one? Yeah. Okay, so she likes that serum. It's really thin and it's good for the day. Okay, so if we were doing daytime, we could just end that with a good sunscreen. So this one is moisturized, a moisturizer plus sunscreen, which normally isn't my favorite, but it's better than nothing for a teenager's sake. Which is your favorite sunscreen? I've given her a lot. <laughs> oh, I gave her a little mini glow screen. I figured, I figured that would, isn't it cute? Okay. For her so to try it. Now she wants the full size, of course. And I'm like, I can't have mine. So I love this stuff. I have two of these because she gave me another one. But it has I really like in it. this one. <laughs> 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 For 
for whenever like but I, it's really good if um, you don't if you don't mind silicone. Last year. Okay, well, we gotta see what it is. So it's the uh, La Roche Posay <laughs> Athelios UV Correct the seventy broad spectrum daily lotion sunscreen. Um, it's really good. I really it like just it. has silicone in it, so I can't use it on Mom. the daily. But she'll put this on what every it, day. What does it mean by SPF seventy? Like, what does it mean by the numbers? Uh, it is the percentage of UVA and UVB rays that are stopped by the SPF. So you would think 70 was like a lot higher than say like 50. They technically say as long as you're between 30 and 50, you're good. 70 is maybe only one percentage more technically. Yes. It's based on tests 100%. that they run. So, okay, we got serums, um, moisturizer. Okay, I want. Can I try this new one? Yes. I want to try this. So this new moisturizing this gel cream. So triceramide complex, niacinamide green tea. But look, look, teenagers can just follow it. It's so good. Oh, what I else did you have? Okay, I, so she also has the eye gel. This is depuff and brighten. So I told her only use this. This is gonna be mostly morning. The half of the label came off so I can't see oh she also does have a fa face mist um again hydrating probiotics it's a good substitute for a toner this one is for your skin's microbiome which I haven't talked a lot about but it's good for redness and I'd say this would be good for acne too if keep you balanced um I can't see because half of this label's gone Oh, the sunscreen wore it off. I don't know, maybe I... Uh, I so, I also taught her if you are going to step it up and use an eye serum. I don't think teenagers need them for anti-aging, but for puffiness, I was like, okay, I, I understand. Sometimes they wake up puffy just like we do. So, this one's good because it... This one even has vitamin C in it. This one's not necessarily anti-aging in my opinion. But it, because of vitamin C, it can help with hyperpigmentation around your eyes and it can depuff. So I tried to explain to her how to apply an eye serum because I caught her Stop. doing it <laughs> all over. Stop. Stop. I'm trying to put as little as possible because, okay. possible because grain of rice. I, I did like an it, actual, Sometimes it's like, really hard thing, to went, pump a very small amount. But like, I always say I pumped it. And then I rubbed it in, and I went under my eye, and I got two looks because of my eye. She got it in her eye. Yeah. So, I always say grain of rice, smaller than the size of a pea, is enough for both eyes. Are we going to use it? Ring finger, least amount of pressure, rub it together. So, Look for the actual orbital bone. So, oh, I'm not in And tap it. That much? Okay? It does not and need to go at your lash line. That much? Or in here. Because your eye serum will migrate up to a full inch. I didn't know that. And that's why I'm teaching you. I just put this on. So when it gets in your eye, especially if something like you're using it at night, that is what actually will lead to your eyes waking up puffier the next day. The product is causing the puffiness. Doing the opposite of what you want it to do. I just want to wet my face. What are, what are you using now? So I already used the... Um, definitely an extra step. You don't need it. Um, but I'd say... For teenagers, you don't need a separate eye cream unless you're prone to milia and you're using a thick moisturizer. If you have more drier skin and you're trying to really lock it in with an occlusive. Something like this gel cream is awesome because it's not probably thick enough to cause that. No, any gel formulation is always good for oily skin. I just want to kind of try this and we've tried it. Ooh, it's very cooling and refreshing. This is the opposite of occlusive. Gel gel formulations are not gonna lock in moisture all night. But they're great for some skin. That's why I like rich creams. I do too. So there it is. I filled it up with the other one, so if you pump it, pump a little bit because I like refilled it with the <laughs> other one. And now if you pump it like too much, a lot of it will come out. Okay. So this is like two different, two old packages ago, maybe, of, it still says milk cream. One old package. Oh, it still says mascara. She refilled because she likes the gold container to match her bathroom. I refilled it with... This is the definition of an occlusive. This is going to hold it in. 
Oh yeah, that was an old package too. That was the one before this. I loved that scent. Okay, so anyway, this is something that's gonna be heavier and this, I always tell you, don't get near your eyes because she did have Amelia form, but she got rid of it. Oh, I showed I you guys what eye cream. that what eye cream got rid of it at Amazon. This Grace and Stella. It's um, really good. It hasn't even run me out yet. So. And I got it in a Fab Fit Fun Box, right? I think. And so. it got rid of her Amelia. So just don't get this too close to the eyes. If you stay here, I think it was you're right good. Here. If you're prone to getting Amelia, or if your daughter has very sensitive skin like mine or you are prone to milia, most likely your child will be, then- um, For you? Yeah. Oh, that's why. That's I why. <laughs> so j put on your an eye serum first or use a gel cream around your eyes. It's not gonna be too heavy. And then if you do need an occlusive to lock it in, just keep it away from this area within me is what, where like I got it. Bone? She got it right here. Um, I put my or eye cream bone. here now. Flipping off the camera. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Cleanse toner, so optional. A salicylic acid toner is a really good one, though, if you're dealing with acne. Um, serums optional as well. Good moisturizer. Yes. SPF during the day. What are some extra add-ons that you love because Me? now that you're obsessed with skincare? Oh my Let's see. gosh, thank you so much for putting me in the spotlight. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about if, I did talk about, oh, is right. this any good? Have you tried it? Well, um, I would- Makeup remover? Is this, this is like eye makeup remover, right? No, it's just makeup remover. But it's like a creamy formation instead of like a liquid. It's not it's a- weird. Oh, I thought it was like an eye makeup remover. If your child's already wearing mascara, I'd say a good eye makeup remover or micellar water. Oh, eye makeup yeah. remover. Yeah, eye makeup remover, it something feels, dual phase. This one feels really oil water, even though it says oil-free. Yeah, nothing's oil-free. Oils are not bad. But um, a balm cleanser or an oil cleanser will remove eye makeup. As long as you're not wearing lashes. So, um, something I like that. I cur. Yeah, I just can't use those near my eyes. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. What else? You like that oil? Because, I don't know, it's just like smoothing. This is the only oil I have, so I haven't tried any other oils. But, She's so the far, bubble, it's that one. Float on. Because. I See, I hate this. I can't see what's in it. Because I. Mom, you need to give me the um bioma one. It doesn't. Do they have it? I know, but they don't have it at Target yet. I forgot I the keep box. Checking online. Um, I'm at, and every time we're at Ulta, half the bioma line is gone. Every time. Like everything or something. So soothing face oil. So where do you soothing. put the face oil in your routine if you're gonna add an oil? After the moisturizer. Yeah. Or you can even add it in your moisturizer a couple drops, and it will kind of help. I think of an oil as almost like an occlusive. It's denser, so it's going to hold in anything you put on your skin this before that. You usually, I do like the pump on this. I love these little. And then if you like. I haven't tried. I think I did try like that the other day, didn't it? It's like that. Yeah. Oh, that is cute. I do like that. And then you re-screw it and then. Yeah, I do like that. Um, but when you like do this, you have to be careful of getting too much out because look how much it Yeah, it, that's a huge dropper for sure. What else? I guess uh, lip care. Oh, lip care? I know. But I really like the Centella stuff that you The Centella is awesome. So if um, you have somebody who is acne prone, using salicylic acid, accidentally dries out their skin too much, Centella Asiatica is literally, I think, the best, best kept secret. It's not a kept secret. Um, it's part of K-Beauty for sure. This is a K-Beauty brand. It did wonders for my rosacea. So, and she has, I, I think she has a form of uh, dermatitis around her nose. And that's because I have dermatitis. My husband has dermatitis. I think we What do you her. have? I have it on my eyes. My husband has it pretty bad. So that, something like that will soothe, calm the area and make it not dry, peely, red, all of those things. It's like a miracle in a bottle. I'm testing a new I Centella a serum right now. Can you like put, put this is awesome. Centella like 
Do you have to put it everywhere or you can just put it under your You can just put it in certain okay. spots. You can put anything in certain spots. That's for sure. These are the lip products that are like my top five. Oh, so. I got her. Right, some of these were mine. The Road. This kind of, this aqua peptide lip treatment. Aquaphor feels good, but. Aquaphor is an oldie but goodie. Oh, my Winky Lux lip oil. Look at this. We've gone through so many of these. It's not even funny. This is like a. This is like a. But do you wear this overnight? But... You wear this like. No. no. I use it during the day. This Tower 28. Don't. <laughs> Why? Because it's a. Lip I just gloss. bought her this one, and I think it's so cool. Again, I'm, I love K Beauty products. So. Oh, it's that's this, a K Beauty. Product? Uh huh. It's oh. this Honey Pot. Look. I just think it's so cool. I've been using it and I really like it. So it's got I've this seen stuff tiny, like that. I it. saw it on an ad and I <laughs> sucked it sucked me in. But then look at this little and then you use the little like honey thing. I would I was so sad when I ruined it because it was so It, it was, was very satisfying to do it. Too. But I was mad when she lost this because But the honey is good. It's not like a nasty taste or anything. I like it. Why did you lose the scooper? I never use the scooper in that. I need a cap that can actually hold it. How cute is that? So I like this. Also K-Beauty. K-Beauty. What is K-Beauty? Korean skincare. Oh. They okay. make the best stuff. I know this is All nourishing, hydrating. I'm telling you, it's great for teen skin. This is one of my favorites because this is caramel. I love caramel. Salty caramel. It's so good. I bought all I flavors. I might need another one. Okay. I okay. might. I actually just bought something from that brand. I can't wait. It's going to be here any day now. I'll test that. She's my greatest tester. Oh, one thing for teenagers. How could we not talk about this? Where are your, don't you have more than these? Don't you have other brands of these? Yeah. I love the Cause Our Excellence. Oh, you have to use my... Okay. Dealing with breakouts. These are... All my daughter things. is... Those are all my things for breakouts. Okay. I love the Cause Our X patches, but the Mighty Patches by Hero... Those are the best ones I've ever are tried. Are good. You like... These are your favorite? Yes. Okay. Instead of getting your teenagers to pop their zits, granted, I know it happens, using hydrochloidal patches so I, that it... It absorbs all of that mm, overnight, and it makes it go down, takes down the swelling. So I love the Hero brand. They're kind of known for that. And this Rescue Balm That's is so good. Post Blemish Recovery Cream. Again, Panthenol, bladed glue can. I can't talk oligopeptides. This is made for post blemishes after they've like dried down and this will keep it from scarring because we talked about those PIH. I just started using this, but the only thing bad about it is the patches don't stick well and it doesn't last long. They didn't get the best reviews, but she really wanted this little case, the Starface. Again, they're little hydrochloidal patches. Um, they just don't absorb as much as this type does. They're cute. Um, drying lotion, you can always use something like this to dry them up. I love drying lotion. She likes this one. This one's a That's the first one fave. she got me, so I don't know. I what don't really like that one that much. Oh, here's more hydro that one gave to colloidal me. acne patches that are like fun, different shapes and stuff. This is another <gasps> Korean brand, but the Cause RX ones are really good too. They have some invisible ones that are thin enough that you can wear them and they're like during the day out and about and people can't see them. I think that's about it. What else do you like to do? She loves sheet masks. Has quite a collection of sheet masks. Yes. But is that necessary? No. That's just yes, fun. It is. It's hydration. Did that's all about it is. Hair care no, we're just talking about skin care, honey. Care. Wants to talk about it. I stole this from her too. Yeah, that's a good one. It just, it is sudden, but she How loves. You, okay, I think that's all. I can't. I feel like we probably missed something, but you guys can comment <laughs> if you have any questions over anything we went out went over. Comment, comment below. <laughs> she knows that's the drill. That's for. <laughs> Hopefully, this will help you with your own tween or teenager. Um, if you need help troubleshooting any of your regimens, I'm always here to help as well. Thank you guys for watching. Why are you struggling? See you next week. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.